In this video, we'll have a look at working with users in Backendless. So if you quickly go into your logged in application again, and you go into the, to the left hand side and just click on users, you'll see there's a lot of settings for users. So the first one there, user properties, they just say that uh, management of user properties is now available under schema management on the data screen. So we'll look at that later on. So the user registration one, uh, the first one that you can choose there enables the users to register a new account. If you switch this one off, they won't be able to create a new account. So there's some settings that you need to set here to make sure that your users are working the way that you want them to work. Let's say, for example, you will require an email confirmation as soon as the guy registers the account, which is always a good thing uh, to prevent scam or spams. Um, so, so what you can do here is to, to switch on or off this require email confirmation and you can also execute some registration callback on your own website or whatever you want to do. So make sure you set these settings first before you start coding for your app. And then if you go to login, you can enable multiple logins. Um, I've just changed mine to five now here. You can force older logins to timeout. You can enable session timeout. You can lock a, lock a user after, uh, let's say, after four uns unsuccessful logins you will you will basically lock the user account or whatever you want to do uh, then also you can unlock a user if it's been locked after 30 minutes or 60 minutes or whatever then email templates is very important so on email templates you'll see uh, that a list of all the templates or the emails that you can send out to the user is shown here and you can go and personalize these emails that are sent out you can, you can even more personalize them as soon as you start paying uh, for, for the paid plan. But uh, this is also available in the free plan. So let's, let's for example, look at um, this one that's read there. So let's say there's, there's something that you don't want to show the user. For example, a confirmation template. If I click on that one, if you said there in, in the login setup that you want to have a confirmation sent that he must click a link in his mail to say I confirm that this is my email address, then this is how that specific uh, template for the email will look. And you can go and change what you want. You can type your own information here. This is just some recommended usage. You can also see there's some substitution variables at the bottom where I can use the, identities, uh, the identity name. So if I go to the data quickly, the identity name, if you go to schema, would be that name that is saved there. So it depends on what you want to do uh, or what you want to send out to the user. So if I go to email templates, again, so that uh, identity value is basically the name value that will be saved in your user's table. Or oh, sorry, the identity name. The identity value will normally be your, um, your email address. So it's up to you what you want to include here. For example, in order to use these substitution variables, you can see there we say thanks and then we show the app's name. So that's one of these variables. And then say development team. So you can play around with this a bit. Uh, let's say I don't want to send a specific email. Then you just click the box there. Do not send this email for the rest. This is the subject. You can change the subject and you can change the mail. You can make things bold. You can, you can do what you want. You can add pictures and so forth. Then also the, the bottom two there, you must use one of these two if you want to, to be able the, to, to uh, or let the user be able to uh, reset his, his password or request a password recovery. So the first one there, the user request password recovery, I'm switching that one off there. Uh, this will basically just give him his new password. So it will say your new password is and then show a generated password for him. So if you want the user to just get his password which I don't think is, a, is really a, a nice way of doing this. But then you can use it like this. So I'm not using this one. So I'm clicking there and say, do not send the email for this event. And then it's got that red envelope. But if you go now to use a request password recovery by link, it means that the user will get a link. He clicks on the link and that link will take him to a new page where he can enter his new password, which I think is the better way to do. But it depends on your specific example. So this is email templates. So make sure that you go and change your email templates before you start uh, creating users for your app. So this is just the settings for the users. If you go to data, you'll see the users table there at the bottom. And we'll, we'll keep it open now at the users table as we do the coding and see how it changes here.
So if you can, you can also create new tables here. So you'll see that I've created a surname table there, uh, but it's up to you on, on what you want to do. So I'm just going to quickly delete that uh, column there. So let's say we're going to create a surname column there. You can see I can choose the, uh, the type string or whatever. I can choose the default value. I can select constraints there to say, you know, this cannot be null. It's required. I want to have a surname or this must be unique value, but unique value will normally be your, your email address. So, and you can also say, well, this is an email address, so check for an email address with an at sign and so forth. Uh, but I'm going to select none for now. So the constraint will be not null, it's required, which means that if I'm creating a new user, I must save the email. You can see they're not null, it's required. The name, not null required. Password, not null required. And surname, not null required. Your created and updated will automatically be there. And uh, for created and update, it's nice to know when is that your new user created and when was it last updated. Okay, so that's that's basically your users column. You can obviously add an address and some some more columns if you like. So let's go to the coding part and uh, see how we can how we can register a user first. So you'll see that I've created a new application in Android. And uh, if you followed my setting up back endless video, you'll see that we use an application class with all the the variables there calling back endless dot set URL initialize your app. Uh, you also need to go to the manifest to set it up there for the application class the name should be your application class there and your permission to use the internet. And if your if your manifest is fine, and you've got your application class ready, just remember that you obviously need the library before you can do anything of that. So in your build.gradle file, you need that compile back endless with the most current version there. So my application is set up so that back endless works automatically. So what I've done is I've just created a few buttons on a layout. So there's my layout. I'm going to use a register new user, log in the user, reset the password, validate logged in user, get data of user logged in currently, and log out the user. So we're going to have a look at the coding for, for doing all of those. So in my main activity, there's the buttons, just the variables for the buttons. I've initialized all the buttons, basic Java coding, sorry, Android coding. And then for every one of those buttons, I have created a set on click listener for them so we can basically just start coding there okay so now let's look at the first one and that is to register a new user how will you create a new user on back endless so that's actually very easy you're going to say back endless mm, it's a back endless user so you're going to say back endless user call it whatever you want equals new back endless user and you don't need to pass anything to the constructor there and then on that user object, you're going to call set property. So you're going to say set property. And you can see there the set property method accepts a key and a value pair. So the key will always be your column that you're referring to. So let's say the first column is email. And now it's important that you make sure that your spelling is correct. So you'll see there that exact spelling is what you should have for your key. So I've got email there, so that's the one that I want to use. So it must be the exact same spelling. Then the second argument is what you want the guy's email to be. So obviously you'll have a registration page where the user will enter his, his all his details, his email, his name, his surname, and so forth. And you're going to get it from there. So I'm just going to use an example here. I'm going to choose this uh, email address and feel free to hack this email address if you want. Uh, there's nothing going on on that email address. It's just for these testing purposes. Okay, so and then uh, you're going to say user.set property for all the other properties also. So the next property will be the name column. So in the name column, I'm going to save, uh, let's say my own name there, Johan. And then go to user.set property again. And then for the column surname, I'm going to set the value Jurius. Sorry, that should be a comma. Second argument. And then there's, there's just one 
that you need to do a bit different and that is setting the password property so on your on your columns now you can see we've gone we've got the email we've got the name we've got the surname you don't set values for created and updated that will be automatically created for you so the other other one that we need there is the password so there's a method that we use for setting the password and that's called set password now the reason why we do this is, is this basically encrypts that password for you automatically and then the password you can pass in as let's just make it one two three okay so now our user are created and we've set to the email column this value to the name column this value to the surname column this value and we set to the password column this encrypted password as one two three and then we need to make a call to back endless to actually send this new user to back endless to save it online so we're going to say back endless dot user service dot register and then you can see it it accepts a new user so we're going to pass in that user so there's there's the the arguments that we need to pass in a back endless user that you want to register as the first argument and the second argument is an async callback so i'm going to talk about the async callback callback now as soon as it's get it gets created there so it's the async callback there you'll see it creates everything for you automatically you just need to put the semicolon there okay so this is basically what happens now we call the back endless user service to register this user in the background async doing it in the background asynchronous so what happens is we send this user to back endless as soon as it's done sending that user to back endless it will run either handle response or handle fault so if everything went fine we're going to run handle response if something went wrong we're going to run handle fault and you can do then what you want to do there so i'm just going to show a toast here to say uh, new user registered successfully now always a good thing to do is just before you make this call basically there start showing your progress dialog and then make sure you dismiss your progress dialog later on when it's done so start showing your your progress dialog there just before the call to back endless and then in handle response as well as and don't forget the error because if there's an error you also want to stop showing your dialog so you'll dismiss your dialog there and there just to to let the user basically know you know we're busy doing something in the background so this is handling the response then we're just going to say new user registers successfully and then um, maybe take him back to the to the login page or whatever you want to do and now uh, when we handle the fault there we can show it toast and we can basically just say that fault object dot get you can either say get message get code or whatever so uh, I think for for the most part uh, get message will will do what basically what you need to do uh, you can go to their website and get a lot of codes let's quickly see if we can get that codes there so if you go to docs you can scroll a bit down to the page and you'll see there under the the uh, user registration where am i at now under user registration you'll see a few error codes there for example uh, user registration is disabled uh, missing password property uh, whatever there uh, we, maybe user with the same identity already exists or whatever you want to do and then you can test for that specific code so if i've got an if statement and i say if the if that specific fault dot get code is equal to 3033 then i know the user with the same identity already exists so it basically depends on what you want to do if you want to check or just show the message there or maybe you want to call not get message but get code and then compare that code uh, you must use the equals method because it's a string code uh, um, if if that specific code equals obviously you can't do it in the toast here but if that specific code equals a specific one then you show a specific toast but for now i think we're just going to use the get message there and show the toast but just remember there's codes and you can go and have a look at that codes and also use it here
So this basically registers a new user online for us. So let's just test it out and see if it works. I'm going to run the application quickly. Okay, so there the application runs. Let's click on register new user. So remember, it's going to take a while to just connect and create that new user. And then it says new user registered successfully. So let's go to the backendless website now. Go back. You see our users. We, will, we were still there. If I go to the data browser now, it will refresh. And you can see there's the user now. It's been, there's the email address that we sent through. There's the name. There's the surname. But now, if I, if I run this again, uh, let me just go to the emulator. If I run this again, it's trying to create that new user again. So it says unable to register user. Just see that again. Unable to, to register user, user already exists. So what happened there? That was handle fault. And that's the message that gets printed out of the screen. Okay, so this is registering a new user. So the user is registered online. So the next part is how can we now log in this already registered user? Um, the big thing now is if you've got email confirmation turned on, you need to you need to go and confirm that. So, for example, you'll see uh, in my user table, you've got a, a user status column and you can see this one waits for email confirmation pending. So if I go to my email address, let's just refresh this one quickly. You can see the confirmation template. Thank you for registering. Before you log in and begin working with the application, please confirm your email address by following the link. So if I click the link, it's going to say congratulations, registration completed successfully. Now if I go back, you'll see there it says email confirmation pending. So let's just refresh it quickly. And then you'll see it says enabled. So now the user status is enabled and this guy can actually now log into the application. So just remember that part. Okay, now let's see how can we log in a new user. Okay, so the only thing we need to do here is to basically send the username and the password to Backendless for authentication. So we're going to call Backendless dot user service again. Sorry, dot user service. And then we're going to call dot login. And then for this one, it needs basically the login the username or the sorry not the username uh, that will be your your identity value so it should be your email address in our in our case the unique value that identifies your user so i'm going to say uh, it's that same email address Obviously, you're not going to type it or hard code it here. You're going to ask the user to, to please provide his username and his password. And you're going to put the username here. And then the password is next to it. So our password, we registered as 123. So let's just use the password as 123 there. We'll change it later on to see how we can pick up the errors. And then the last argument there is again the new async callback. And remember to put your semicolon there. So basically, it's just back endless dot user service dot login. Use the, the identity value. So if you just go to your users table uh, and you go to schema, that's the one that's got the identity button clicked there. So in our case, it's the email. OK, so I'm sending through the email address with the password, the identity value with the password to authenticate the user. Now it goes to back endless. It tries to authenticate when it's done it will either run handle response or it will run handle fault so if it runs handle response it means that user has successfully been logged in and we can show a message or whatever you want to do so i'm going to say toast just to to show us something to the screen so we're going to say logged in successfully or authenticated successfully or whatever you want to do and then if there's a fault something went wrong we can again just show the message here by saying fault dot get message now when the user is logged in successfully this response object there will then be basically a reference to the user that's currently logged in so you can say response dot and there's a few things you can do on it you can set the part you can uh, get the email of the person you can get his password his properties his um, you can set his email you 
you, you can look at, at all the methods that you can use on that specific one, depending on what you want to do. For example, if you want to show the logged in user somewhere, then you can say, get email there to get the email. Okay, but it's up to you what you want to do there. So this object then will be a reference to the user that you just logged in. Okay, so now let's run this quickly and see what it does. Okay, so we have registered new user. It's fine, working fine. Now let's click on log in the user. So if we click on log in the user, it says logged in successfully. So now if I, let's change the password there to one, two, three, four and run it quickly again. I'm going to click on log in the user again. And then you can see invalid login or password because my password is now incorrect. So I'm just going to change it back to a one, two, three there. And now if we click again on login the user, you'll see it should be fine now again logged in successfully. So obviously here when we say BTN login and the handle response came through and you can show the message logged in successfully and then you can close your activity, your login activity and start showing the very first um, activity of your app or whatever you want to do. But that's normally how it works. And then uh, let's go to the next part, next part. So if we want to have the user reset his password you can do so by using a button or whatever you want to do but if you want to have the user reset his password let's look at that quickly okay so it's actually a simple call again so we're going to say back endless uh, dot user service dot restore password and then you need to pass in the username or your identity value. So in this case, it's, it's basically just the email address again. So I'm going to say Julius Johan 2017 at gmail.com again. That's your identity value that you want to reset the password for. So obviously, you're going to ask the user if he clicks on the reset button, please give me the, uh, the username of the password that you want to reset or of the account that you want to reset. And then the user types his email address and you put it in here. And then the only other thing you need is that going in the background again using the async callback. So now you'll see we restore the password for this account. It goes to the background and it sends out that reset password link. If everything went fine, it's going to go to handle response. If there was something wrong, it will go to handle fault. So let's just put a toast there. So that toast will basically just say a reset instructions sent to email. You can even show the email address there to the user or whatever you want to do. And then for this one again, we'll show the fault. So it's going to be fault dot get message. And that's the error. So if something went wrong, we're going to do it there. Just remember, I keep on forgetting to tell you that. But remember that just before you call back endless, you should start showing your dialog there. Dismiss your dialog in handle response, but also dismiss it in handle fault. Otherwise, you could get a fault and then your, your progress dialog will just st um, never stop running and just irritate your user. Also make sure that you set up email templates on templates on uh, back endless like we've done in the, in the beginning of the video. And this will also determine whether or not the user will receive an email with a link to re-enter his password or an automatically generated password. So it it's, depends on what you set there. So I'm going to run this one quickly again. And I'm going to click on reset password. Now, before I do that, let's just quickly go to my email address again. Okay, so you can see I've basically just got these two emails there. So let's run that one quickly. Uh, where's the app now? So we're going to go to reset password. And now it, it's sending reset instructions sent to email. So let's look at my mail quickly. There we've got it. User request password recovery. There's the link. I'm going to uh, click on the link. The user or the ask for the user for the password. Let's make it one, two, three, four now. And again, one, two, three, four. And say save. Okay, password changed. So now if I go back to my application, and I want to log in the user, you'll see invalid login or password because I changed my password now where I try to log in to 1234. So I'm going to change that one to 1234. Let's run it again. Let's try logging in now again. If I click on login there, it says logged in successfully. So the password was successfully changed. Now let's go to the next part to validate a user 
to check if a user or the user that's currently logged in if he is authenticated and validated. So if you want to go and check if a user session is still valid, you can use the, the, the validate function here. So one thing to remember if you want to do that, then in this back endless user server, when you log in a user, there's a, a third argument. Remember, we've got one, two, and then we've got the third argument there. Now, the fourth argument you need to set to true there. So just remember this one. The fourth argument there must be set to true. When you set this value to true, it saves the user on the device and we can then authenticate using the is valid login method. So let's let's quickly run that method. We're going to say back endless dot user service dot is valid login and then we need to pass in just the new async callback to check if the user that's currently logged in remember you log in the user there and you set that value to true it saves the user on the device and we can check if that user is still valid if his session has not expired or whatever so if you want to do it this way just remember that you need to put that argument there to true in the the login call to log in the user so if we validate then if it goes to handle response there then we know uh, the user is valid so we can or then everything went okay so we're going to say uh, if the response that object that was passed through now so it's either true or false so we can just test for if response that's if it's true so if it's true we can just show the toast that the user is authenticated so we're going to say toast and say user authenticate it and the else there will be that the user is not authenticated so we'll just show a toast there user not authenticated and then obviously if the user is not authenticated you take him back to the login activity and also in the fault if there's a fault you can take him back to the login activity again so let's just say toast there and fault dot get message Okay, and then you can save. So uh, just this is just to, to check if uh, the user that's currently logged in is still valid. His session for logging in is still valid. So we can test this out. I'm not going to change a few a, a few values here. So it should basically just show us that the user, this user is uh, still logged in and valid. So let's say validate logged in user user is not authenticated let's log in the user first logged in successfully now i can validate that logged in user user is authenticated okay so it's working working exactly as we want to have it work okay so now the next part is to get data of the user that's currently logged in so in this button let's see how we can get some data from the user so the first thing that we need is we need to retrieve the object ID of the user that's currently logged in. So we're going to say string user object ID equals. And remember that uh, we said we should, where are we now? In this login, uh, user service.login, we said we should put that argument to true to save the user. So if that is done, then we can go and get that currently logged in user by saying user id storage factory that's where it's saved on the on the phone and we're going to say dot instance dot get storage dot get and that gets us the user's object id and then we can we can use that object id to make a connection to back endless and get some data about that specific user okay so what we want to do then is to go and say back endless dot data in this regard so we're going to say dot data dot of and then we need to indicate the class that we want to get data from so that's the back endless user class and then we're going to say dot find by id so we're going to say find by id and then we're going to pass in that user object id of ours the one that we just got there we pass in the user object id and then we send it to the background so then we're going to say new argument 
and this is a new async callback and just remember your semicolon there so basically this back endless user object will then be the user that's currently logged in and we can get data from that so it's back endless dot data dot of the back endless user class find the user by its id that's the user that currently log in's id and then it goes to the background to find that user if it found the user it's going to go to handle response otherwise it's going to show handle fault now let's just show a toast here let's just see if it works and then we can refer to this object now which is called response and we can call a few methods on it so we can for instance call get mail get email or whatever and then let's just put a space in between and let's also let's also show the response dot i'm going to call the get property method so you remember previously when we registered the user we said set the property so now i can just call get property name and it should return johan for me so I'm going to say response.getProperty and then I just indicate the key which is the column name. So I'm going to say, let's say the surname there. So I'm going to get the surname column. Okay, so this toast will show the guy's email, a space and then the guy's surname. And then if there's a fault, we will say toast and fault.getMessage again. So that's getting the data from a user. So let's just run this quickly and see how it works and if it's working correctly. Okay, so let's click on uh, get data of user logged in currently. And there it gives you the email address. Let me just see that again. The email address, a space, and then the guy's name. So that's working 100%. Now the last feature for this video is to basically log out the user. So how can we log out a user that's currently logged in? Okay, so that's just basically a call to say back endless dot user service dot log out. So log out. And then we need to call there. Just remove that. So in the logout, we just go and say new async callback to go to the background and it logs out the currently logged in user. So again, if it goes to handle response, you know that the user has been successfully logged out. If it goes to handle fault, you need to figure out what went wrong there. So I'm going to go to toast there. Create a new toast. And we're just going to say logged out successfully. And then in the fault part, again, we can just go and show a toast. Putting message. And that's basically it. So if you click on logout, it's going to say log out, logged out successfully after going to the background. If it's correct, if everything went fine, logging out the user. And then obviously here you can take the user then back to uh, the login activity so that you can log in with a different username or whatever he wants to do. So let's run this one quickly. Okay, so let's, let's log in a user to make sure that there's a logged in user. So the user is logged in successfully. If I click log out the user, you'll see it says logged out successfully. Now, just to test it, if I say log in the user, and I'm going to say validate this logged in user, it should be fine. Now I'm going to log out the user. Let's validate the user again. User not authenticated. Let's get the data of that user. Entity with name cannot be found. Okay, so logging out the user will then you basically just take the user back to the login screen and he can log in again with a new account. So this is the user service. I hope you understand the basics of the user service. You can go into the documentation if you want to know a bit more about roles and all of those. Um, but these are the basic features of creating a user on backendless and then logging in the user, resetting the password, validating the login user, get data of the user logged in or logging out the user. Hope you've enjoyed this video.